Hello everyone. Welcome to part 11 of the Python Basics tutorial series. We'll be doing a simple word count. So a word count is where you compute the number of times each word occurs, typically in some sort of text or string as we have here. And the way we'll do this is we'll first clean the punctuation. So basically we'll remove, you know, these hyphens, these commas, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll transform all the words that have uppercase letters to lowercase, okay? And the reason why we do that is we want to have, you know, a word count. So, for example, if we want to determine how many times the word that occurs, this that should be equivalent to this that, okay? A little confusing, um, but you'll see what I mean, okay? So the first thing we do in our code is we assign this string to the variable text. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the punctuation. And I have a string of punctu punctuation characters. And for example, the first for the first iteration of this loop, I'm gonna have this hyphen, and I'm gonna temporarily assign it to the variable char. Next, we're gonna take advantage of the inbuilt string method replace. And what replace does is it'll take that punctuation character, in this case a hyphen, and replace it with an empty space, okay? So these two hyphens over here are just gonna be two empty spaces, okay? So after we go through the rest of this loop, and you know, for the next iteration, we'd remove the periods and replace them with spaces, and so on and so forth, next, um, we're going to make all the uppercase letters in this entire string lowercase using another inbuilt method called lower. Okay, so after we do these two steps, you'll see that the string we have is all lowercase letters and there's no punctuation. Where the punctuation used to be, we have extra spaces. Okay, so since we have a string here, um, eventually, we're going to want to isolate the words in the string. To do this, we'll, we'll turn the string into a list, and we'll use another handy inbuilt string method called split, which will return a list of words that are basically every word that had a space um, will be separated. You know, all the spaces between the words will separate out the words, okay? And as you'll see now, we just have a word list, okay? Um, we don't have any counts though. So the next thing we're gonna do, as you see in the task above, is eventually we wanna get um, a list of word count pairs sorted from highest to lowest. So the next thing we're gonna do is we'll get how many times each word occurs, and we'll use a dictionary for this. But it won't be sorted when we're done with this. That'll be another step. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize a dictionary, okay? And then we're gonna iterate through the word list. And for each word in the word list, we're gonna see if it's currently a key in our dictionary. If it is, we're gonna return the current value in our dictionary. If it's not, and for the first iteration of our, the first iteration of our list, we have the word bands. And since the word is currently not a key in our dictionary, we're going to return the value zero. And then we'll just have zero plus one, and we'll assign that one to the new key in our dictionary, bands. Okay? And we'll do the same for the rest of our word list. We'll see if the key exists in the dictionary. If it doesn't, we'll return zero. If it does, we'll return the current value um, the key has in the dictionary, okay? And what you'll see over here is after we're done with this code over here, we're gonna have a dictionary, and to the left of the colon, we're gonna have our keys, i.e. our words, and to the right is how many times the word occurred in our word list. So for example, the word and, or the key and, occurred seven times 
in our word list, okay? So as you probably remember from part 10 of our tutorial series, dictionaries are unordered. So the way we're gonna sort, the way we're gonna have a list of word counts sorted from highest to lowest is we're gonna convert our dictionary into a list, okay? Because lists you can sort and dictionaries not so much, okay? So as you'll see here, we're gonna have, we're gonna initialize an empty list. Next, we're gonna utilize the inbuilt dictionary method called items. And what items does is it returns a list of tuples with the first index um, in your tuple being the key and for that corresponding um, word um, and then count uh, tuple, you'll have first the key and then the value. And what we're doing over here is we're reversing the keys and the values. And the reason we're doing this is it's just easier to sort later on. So basically, for each key and value, we're basically going to make the value um, go first and the key go second. OK? So as you'll see over here, um, originally opinions um, was you know first it was a key at the time um, but now it'll be second okay so after we do that we're gonna first run this code and then we'll sort from high to low okay and as you'll see um, as kind of expected you know, words like the occur the most, to, of, and, whereas more complicated words, less common words, occur less, like abolish. Okay? Um, I should note that if you don't use the get method, um, you can run into a key error. So, as we talked about in part 10, when we had the story count dictionary, um, if I look if I try to look up a value for a key that doesn't exist, you get a key error. And another solution um, that we could use instead of use the get method for when we're iterating through our word list, we could have first checked if the key exists in the dictionary. And if it doesn't, uh, assign it a, diff a default value of zero. Um, but I find this more complicated than using the inbuilt uh, get method. Um, and that's it for this part of the tutorial. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I should also mention again that all this code is on my GitHub uh, in case you want to copy it or play with it yourself. I find a good way to reinforce learning is just to play with the code yourself um, rather than just you know watch me do the code. Um, that's it. And in part 12, we'll go over the while loop. And that's it. Bye.